Hello there, this video today is going to be regarding tests of significance. I have here an example problem that I am going to solve. Now let's go, let's just get started. A city worker is sent to measure the speeds of a random sample of 50 motorists at the intersection. The sample average speed of the vehicles is 66 kilometers an hour. Is this enough evidence to conclude that the true mean speed, mu, of all the drivers at the intersection is greater than the, the supposed null hypothesis of 60, when we know that the standard deviation of vehicles speed is 15 kilometers an hour that is should a red light camera be installed now the first step we're going to want to take is knowing the formula we're going to be using we're going to be having the sample mean subtract the null hypothesis the thing we're trying to test and we're trying to test if it's equal to 60 that's called the null hypothesis so we're going to be subtracting by that mean so that would be the null hypothesis zero that's how it's denoted divided by the standard deviation of our sample that's given as, or that can be calculated as, using the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of our sample size. This will give us a z value that we're going to be using to determine if it is statistically significant. If it is, then we can conclude that a red light camera would need to be installed because people are on average going faster than 60 kilometers an hour and actually going to, to about an average of 66. So what is the, so let's just plug in the data and get an associated z value. We have our, our sample mean as being 66 subtract the, the null hypothesis mean of being 60 divided by the oops divided by the standard deviation 15 which that is then divided by the square root of the sample size given as being 50 50 motorists if you did this calculation out you would get a z value around 2.83 now it's just a matter of going to the standard normal probability table and getting out an associated probability to this z score this z value so here's the table. Let's go and try find our value. We're looking for 2.83. Here's 2.8. And the 3 is located right here, crossing them down. We have a probability of decimal 9.977. So 0 0.9977. 0 0.9977. What we want to test, however, is that the average is going to be greater than 60 kilometers an hour. We don't really care if it's going to be less because that would be even more safe in most of the cases, we're, we're testing in this question whether or not the average speed of these 50 drivers or of people in general is greater than 60. That means we have to do one, subtract the value we just got to get the actual probability we're going to be testing to, to determine if it's statistically significant. Doing this calculation out, you would get an, a, an answer of around, let me write the answer up here, you would get an answer of 0.0023. Now the next step is to actually match this towards something. When we are doing tests of significance, we need to match our values we got, this one right here, with something we call level of significance. The values that this would commonly take on would be 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.05. These are just things we match it by to, to determine if the value we got right here is actually significant enough to say that on average people are going more than 60 kilometers an hour. We can use either one of these. For this question, however, we're going to be using, let's say we want to use this one here actually, 0 0.05. So let's use that one. Erasing everything else, now we have to, we just have to match it uh, qualitatively. Looking at these answers, we can say that this one right here, the probability we got is significantly less than the level of significance we're testing it by. And because that is the case, we have enough evidence to suggest that the average of at the average motorists are going more than 60 kilometers an hour, and therefore a red light camera would need to be installed. And that is how you would answer a basic problem regarding tests of significance. The whole idea here is to determine if the if what is being said is actually true, or perhaps how true is it. Is there evidence suggesting it's not true? Well, in this case, there is, correct? So it's quite important. There are also other methods of doing this. We can actually use confidence intervals and to determine this, and it's actually a bit more simpler when we're dealing with those. But that will be covered in a later video. And now, this is the conclusion of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section below. I will do my best to answer them. And I do hope you are having a nice day.